Our scripture for this morning will be Psalms 1. I'm reading from the uh, English Standard Version. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law does he meditate day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Father, we do praise you this morning. We thank you that you woke us up in our right minds. We thank you that you enabled us to come to this place of worship so that we can stand together in your presence, Lord. We thank you for health and continuing to give us the ability to breathe in and out, to walk, to eat, to live, Lord, for you. We just thank you, Lord, that you forgive us for our omissions, sins that we've committed that we didn't even know we were committing. You, you died on the cross to save us from those even. And Lord, we thank you that you, you forgive us for those things that we willfully did that was not pleasing to you. We just thank you that you are a forgiving God. Hallelujah. We thank you that your mercy extends to us every day, and every day is a new slate to give us another chance to start all over. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We pray for those that are on their way, Lord, that they might arrive safely, and for us that we come to congregate to hear your voice, Lord God. We want to hear what you have to say for us to us today so that we can carry on this week announcing your word preaching your word, spreading peace, spreading healing. We thank you, Lord God, that you've made us ambassadors of yours so that we might carry out the gospel. And Father, we pray for the, the people who are involved in the war in the Ukraine. We thank you, Lord God, that you will protect those citizens, Father. We pray that the war stop in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that this will come to an end in a soon time, Lord God, but it will accomplish the purpose for which it was meant, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that, that those people who are seeking refuge will find refuge. Those that need food and shelter and clothing, Lord, give them to them from your abundant supply. We thank and praise you, Lord, that, that oh, those that know you, Lord God, don't lose faith in you. But, Father, that those that don't know you will find you Amen. and that you will minister to them, Lord God. Bring peace to that place in the name of Jesus. Amen. And, Father, we thank you for this service this morning. We thank you that the word will go forth and will hit us where we need it. We'll hear what we need to hear out of the word that's spoken today. We give you praise for our pastors, Lord God. We thank you that they want to know good things, that their cupboards are full, their, their coffers are full. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing, all that you have done, and what you're doing today. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. I'm starting a club. Fraternity and a sorority combined. As I realize this is the association, the club, the society that God wants us to be in. So I'm going to start the LA chapter. And this club needs to be all around the world, wherever Christians are. And the club deals with submission. Submission. It's a wonderful thing for God to save us, and he does, when we ask him into our hearts. That salvation is the work of his grace. Uh -huh. 
but that doesn't cause us to be submitted to one another. He saves us, not by any merit of our own, but because he loves us. But then he talks to us about a covenant, us loving him. Uh -huh. He said he'll know that we love him when we what? Obey him, keep his commandments, do what he asks us to do. Amen. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about a commission club. One that, not commission, but a commitment club or a submission club, a submitted club. You know, I don't find a lot of Christians that are committed. I don't find a lot. And as I study the word of God, I see that he talks about a remnant. Mm -hmm. A remnant. He's going to have a remnant that will obey him and submit to him and not bow their knee to bear. Other scriptures talk to us about taking a church out of a church. Amen. So we want to talk in our dunamis class, in our coming together this morning, we want to talk about our submission to God. How, I want you to hear the things that you've been saying and you've been doing instead of walking blindly. Do you know if you limp, you don't know that your leg is dragging? You get used to it. And that's just, you're just walking. Amen. And everything is, this is just me. We walk by the way we feel. If you're not told that your opinions are not valued in the kingdom of heaven unless they line up with the word of God, you're an opinion. Tell them, well, this is the way I feel. Amen. And you're just nailing a coffin of premature death because you're walking by feeling instead of by what God has said. Before you can make surrender or commitment, you've got to find out where the warfare is. Where do you think the warfare starts, family? In the mind. This is the playground right here that the enemy comes in to attack. Well, it just seems logical to me, such and so. You start with your logic and your opinion and your this, but you're not running it by the word of God. Then you want to enforce it on everybody else. And if you don't feel like I feel, I scratch you off. Neither is that God's walk for you. Do you know if you scratch people off, you need to be the first person scratched? Because scratching people off of your list is not godly. I'm just going to cut that right now. Uh -huh. God said even as he is, so are we to walk in this world. He didn't cut you off. Amen. Submission doesn't mean having your way. It means having God's way. Submission does not mean voicing your opinion and telling people, if you don't like it, do something about it. That's not submission. Submission means killing your flesh. Submission means to stop rebuking people that bring you the word. You're rebuking God when somebody tells you what the word says and you get hostile. I don't want to hear that. You're saying I don't want to hear God. That's what you're saying. Submission is the next step after salvation. Submission. Submission. To be in this club, there are some things that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to willfully cleanse your tongue. God's not going to make you stop cussing. 
Amen. You're going to have to stop the romance with things that you say, ooh, I just love, kill it. Kill all the things that you love. Don't love something more than you love God. Amen. Don't have any other gods before him. Yeah, but I need my, he wants you to say, I need my Savior. I don't care if you're saying I have to have my coffee. He told you he's a jealous God. My job is to tell you what's up. I don't want you to stand before the throne of grace and everything burn up, go up in smoke. Well, I didn't know what I was just, well, you know, I'm just human. Stop saying you're human. He didn't tell you that. He told you you're an ambassador, a representative for him. You're not representing him when you're walking in the flesh. You're not representing him when you're killing yourself with your I likes. I just love get a divorce for those things that you just love that you don't put God first. I remember when I came back from getting the divorce, I ran away for three months. I thank God for keeping me in my children's life. And when I came back, it was summertime and I couldn't work because school, I was teaching school there. And school didn't open until the middle of September. And I wouldn't get a paycheck until October sometime. And I was back home. And the Lord blessed me with a job on the playground at the school that I taught at regularly. It was a minimum wage job. And then the government, do you know the government still slices a minimum wage? Mm-hmm. I don't think I made a dollar an hour. I went to church, but the day before, I told the Lord, I said, I know you're not expecting me to tithe. I wrote down these bills. Hadn't worked for three months. Yeah. No. Yeah. I ran away in May. Yeah, three months, four, three or four months. And the Lord told me, I'm not changing my word for you. My word is written so that you can have life in that more abundantly. I said, Lord, how am I going to feed my kids? There's no money for food. There's no money. I figured it out. I made just enough to bring home, to pay that house note. My house note in those days, I, I made $725 a month when I was teaching school, but not on the playground. My house note was $379. That sounds like a joke today, but then it was, it was traumatic then. Because I didn't bring home but $500 a month after the taxes, you know? And that was when I was teaching. But I just couldn't make the house note with the pay on the school. There was no food money. There was no grocery money. There was no utility money. There was nothing. And God wanted me to tithe. And we had a talk. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do what you say. I said, but uh, you call me to preach the word. And I will be preaching tithing doesn't work if this thing doesn't work, because it doesn't make any sense to go back to school, I mean, to go back to work. The first day of uh, work in September, I took my three-year-old child with me because it was $125 a month for childcare. I had just enrolled her, but I didn't have it. And you put it down in the beginning, you don't pay at the end, you see. So I took her to school. The principal came in. He, he didn't ever come in my office, I mean my classroom. He came in, talked to me, asked me for prayer. I prayed for him. He turned around and said, who is this little child so much shorter than the other children? <laughs> I 
she looked up and said, that's my mommy I wanted to say, Louie, if you don't shut up, you know. <laughs> that's my mommy. He said, how old is she? I said, oh, she just turned three. She said, May 5th, gonna give all the information. <laughs> he said, this is a liability. We can't have children enrolled. She's not school age and she's not, you know. Oh no, uh, why is she here? I said, uh, because she can't stay home alone. He said, Johnson, you're gonna have to do something about this. I looked to the Lord when he walked out the door and I said, now I tithe off that playground now and look at you, Lord, where are you? And his word resounded, I said, I'd never leave you or forsake you. I went home. There was refrigerator, had two bottles in it of water and that's all we had. And then a lady that we knew that was a preacher said, I'm gonna bring you some government cheese. Me and Janelle lived that summer off of government cheese. You remember Janelle? Thankful for it. And Janelle said it was good too. <laughs> Talking about commitment. Many people want God to prove himself before they'll make a commitment. He proved himself on Calvary. Say amen. Come on. My phone rang when I got home, so I realized they hadn't cut it off yet, you know. I answered it, and it was a lady from the child care. She was from another country. She had a pretty thick accent, and she said, I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, uh, your, your little girl didn't come, come today. What, is she sick? I said, no. What happened? I said, I didn't bring her. She said, I had a dream. In the dream, God told me in the dream, this little girl with those two ponytails, don't charge her not penny. Bring the child, bring the child. I just cried. Sometimes the faith walk will sweat you. Amen. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I brought her the next day. The principal came back in and looked in. I said, you looking for Loey? Amen. Now I'm going to tell you something else that was interesting. Other teachers put their children in people's classes and they were underage and never got caught. Never got caught. You understand what I'm saying? And it was well. And of course, I didn't squeal. But there's a reason God wants you to walk the tightrope of faith and commitment. You're not gonna know him in the power of his resurrection until you find out that obedience is better than sacrifice. It feels like you're out on a limb and it's just gonna break. But God wants to show you his might and his power Amen. and his strength. Amen. I told you when, I'm back to the playground the man that was over the playground came in and he gave me this huge stack of postcards, but they were big, about that big, and they were shiny. He said, give this to any kids that you want to that come to the program regularly as a treat. I said, okay, put them on the desk over there. I was figuring out some square dancing things. I had to have a curriculum for the playground, you know. We had square dancing, and we had, uh, I always had them doing we go to teach them how to talk about the things that were troubling them and I'd pray for them. I did ministry at work. Anyway, uh, later I looked at those things and it was a free meal. Uh, a hamburger, a fry, and a drink from McDonald's. 
all those children that came had a meal every day, and my kids had lunch every day. Supernatural. Sometimes when you say I don't have enough, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Just be obedient and go into his plenty. Amen. Amen. Just be obedient. Commitment. Commitment. There were things people would say to me that were just horrible. Just horrible. And the Lord said to me, what is truth? You know truth then who's telling a lie? The devil. Well, why are you upset? I told you he's a liar and the father of lies. Are you fighting the lies of the devil and taking it personally? He's a liar, and he's distracting you from making a commitment to God because this is not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. But the battle begins with you killing your flesh. Can you shut up? Can you give your tongue to the Lord unless you're speaking those things that build? Commitment is every level. And this is our hour of power right now. For those of you that want to make commitment today, I, I want you to just repeat with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I'm, not my own. I'm not my own. I'm bought with the price. I'm bought with the price. I am blood bought and redeemed. I'm washed in the blood of the crucified one. And you said you're not going to leave me, not going to forsake me. I receive what you said. And I rebuke the lies of the devil in the name of Jesus. I am not rejected. I can't, I can't be rejected. My creator, My creator has, received has received me and caused me and caused to, have life to have life eternal in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Anything, Anything that speaks rejection, that speaks rejection isn't, from him, isn't from him. So I don't care about it anyway because it's not what I vie and contend for. Lord, I want your favor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want your favor. So I came home. I told you I had two bottles of water in the refrigerator, and that was it. And when I came home, there was food on my porch. Boxes of food. I, to this day, I don't know who to thank but Jesus. When that bout ran out, God told me, go buy the biggest freezer you can. I heard him, but I said, with what? And he didn't speak. And I don't like to use charge cards, and I don't like to run up, you know. And in that time, I knew if I charged something, I couldn't pay it back, no way. After about five minutes, I realized, you didn't say yes, sir. See, your parents are supposed to teach you when I call you answer, so that you'll answer God right away, instead of thinking you got playground time, and I'm thinking about it. That's what happens when I talk to people about what God says, and they'll say, I pray about it. How are you going to pray about what God says? <laughs> it's time to obey, <laughs> not pray. Today, if you hear my voice, what the word says, don't harden your heart, you see. I put the kids in the car. I went to Montgomery Ward, and I trembled all the way. As I prayed in tongues, I said, oh, Father, I hope I'm not missing it because this doesn't make any sense. They had some refrigerators and freezers that were what they call freight damaged, little nicks on the side or something. I found the biggest one they had, and I charged it. 
I remember it's 300 some dollars. I said, that's as much as a month's rent. I mean, a uh, mortgage. I said, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, I pray I'm not missing you. He said, keep it filled. I said, I'm standing in faith. You did one miracle, but I'm standing in faith, Lord. In two days, somebody handed me the, uh, a check for the amount of that freezer and three cents over. I went and cashed that card out immediately. Then food started coming from everywhere, and he said, live a tithed life. When you get something, don't say, it's, well, this is all for me. Keep giving, keep giving, keep giving, keep giving. I started taking people in my house that needed housing because he gave me a roof I'm standing in faith for. I didn't say, this is my house. Lived, live a tithed life. A package of gum. Lou, why do you know you don't chew all five pieces of gum? You must insist somebody has to have some. My children loved it. Mommy, you going to tithe those french fries off your plate? <laughs> yes, God will do everything you ask him to do, but he needs you to be committed to his word. Give, and it shall be given unto you. And I was saying, Lord, when you give to me, then I'm going to give you these tithes, but I can't see it right now. Yeah. You've got to walk by faith, not by sight. We're going to speak of commitment now. Father, Father I, commit I commit to please you. To please you. I, can't please you I can't please you if I don't give. Your spirit, Your spirit is a spirit of giving, a spirit of, giving, a spirit of sharing, a spirit of sharing. A, even a spirit of sacrifice, spirit of sacrifice. even as you, gave your life to me, as you gave your life to me, so I could live. So I could live. Lord, Lord, I'm not going to be like that young ruler that says, I want to follow you, but I can't. Give away what I love, my riches. And you fill it in. You fill it in. Your what? What is it that you say, but I just can't part with it? Give it to Jesus. Give your family. Give your loved ones. Give everything to him. Because the earth is his and the fullness thereof. Don't you know it's his, not yours? He said this to us a long time ago. If anyone doesn't separate from mother, father, sister, brother, children, houses and lands, you're not fit to enter in the kingdom. What is that separation? It's a commitment of submission. It doesn't mean you can't have it. It means that it can't be your Lord. Chanel had a beautiful mink coat and some other kind of coat I can't remember. And Jesse had one, and it was winter. It was so pretty. And I said, oh, Lord, I want a beautiful fur coat like that. And you know what, what the Lord told me? You can have anything you want as long as it doesn't have you. Amen. If you get the fur and somebody's bleeding in sh and in shock, Will you wrap them in it? Will you wrap them in it? You can have anything you want if it doesn't have you. Will you turn away? That's what Lucifer accused Jesus, uh, uh, Lucifer accused Job of. Oh, you, he got it good, but you... You blow on his stuff, he'll curse you. Stuff. I got re revelation. You're not taking it with you. Figure it out. It's not going to be yours anyway. 
and you can't part with it, you can't tithe, you can't give, you can't bless, you can't, you got another God before you. Jealousy, jealousy. Stop competing. There's one man's love you need, and that's the approval of God. Cain killed his own brother because he was jealous of the anointing that, in favor that God showed to his brother. In the churches, there's so much jealousy. In politics, there's so much jealousy. In the world, in the families, everywhere you look, on the jobs, there is envy and jealousy. And I want to go back and say among Christians, When God is God, it means you're committed to him and everything else can go. And you won't let your faith be shaken. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You're part of that. Some of us can't even say, have your way, Lord. Because we want our way. Say with me, Lord. Commitment of my tongue. Commitment of my stuff, whatever it is. I commit my appetite to you. I don't want to be like those people that complained about manna and God finally gave them some meat, some pheasant. And it killed them. They choked in, their, in, in, in the eating of it. They choked every last one of them. Somebody tell me, I can't follow a routine. God told you, self-control. Kill that flesh. It means commitment. You know, serving Jesus is not an isolated thing. It's everything in your life. Surrender and committed. My tongue, say it with me, my tongue is yours. Give me the holy shut up when I need to. Lord, give me the holy speak up when I need to. Lord, convict me of my sins. Close my eyes to the critical spirit where I can see everybody but me. Show me me and I desire a heart of repentance in Jesus' name. Amen. The last area we're going to talk about today is surrender to forgiveness. I'm so mad at so... You confessed it and you got it. You are mad. Mad. Madness. You know what madness is? Insanity. Thank you, Sister Joy. Mad. Have you ever heard the word stark, raving, mad? It's not a gift from God. Say this scripture with me. Great peace. Have they? that love God's law and nothing will offend them. That is a goal. That's a goal. Everything somebody says or does, I'm just so mad. You are not a puppet. Stop letting the devil pull your strings. The goal for you is to have great peace. Devil, cut up all you want. I love his law. His law set me free. His law tells me the truth. His law says I'm a winner. His law doesn't lie on me. His law doesn't persecute. His law is not a critical spirit. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of God converts the soul. The law of God sends me to people that are as an enemy to see reconciliation in their lives. 
After all they did to you, no, they did that to Jesus. This is his word I'm representing. Ambassadors for Christ. Understand we don't cut off people's ears that are taking us to the cross. We heal them. Do you understand your call? Church, get right with God. Amen. Hallelujah. And that wasn't even the sermon. <laughs> it wasn't, but it was. But it was. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, but it was. <laughs> God is so good. We are, we are blessed. We really are. I hope we all know how blessed we are to hear such good word like this all the time, too. It's a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In all things, we give him thanks. In all things, we give you thanks. We give you praise and thanksgiving at all times. In everything, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. In all things, we give you thanks, we give you praise and thanksgiving at all times. In everything, we give you thanks, we give you thanks. In the middle, in the middle of the conflict, in the valley of our lives. be denied in all things we give you thanks we give you praise and thanksgiving at all times in everything we give you thanks we give you thanks in the middle in the middle of the conflict in the valley of our lives we will lift up songs of worship for your goodness cannot be denied in all things. We give you thanks, we give you praise and thanksgiving at all times. In everything, we give you thanks, we give you thanks. For we know, for we know that every problem is a tool in your own hand. to stand in all things. We give you thanks, we give you praise and thanksgiving at all times. In everything, we give you thanks, we give you thanks. In all things, in all things, we give you thanks, we give you praise and thanksgiving at all times. In everything, we give, we give you thanks, we give, give you thanks. At all times, at all times, in everything. We give you thanks, we give you thanks. At all times, at all times, in everything. We give you thanks, we give you thanks. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Give thanks, hallelujah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. To the Holy One. Give thanks because He's, because given. he's given Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. His Son. Hallelujah. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks, give hallelujah. thanks to the Holy One. Give, give thanks. thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now, and now, let the 
the weak, let the weak say, say I am strong. I am strong. Let the poor let say the I am poor rich. Say Hallelujah. I am rich because of because what? Because of what the Lord has done for us. of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Hallelujah. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks. Because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. Oh, give thanks. Give thanks. Hallelujah. With a grateful heart, give, give thanks. thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ. Guys, I know you think all those puzzle ads are fake. But today I finally found the game. I was liking it. Ebony.
25 says, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently. We invite all members and friends of the Los Angeles Shabbat Church to come together and participate in the following weekly phone conference meetings for 2022. Prayer is every Monday to Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. All Tuesday Bible studies have been postponed until further notice. Tuesday evening prayer is from 6.30 to 7 p.m. Men Talk meets the first and second Tuesday of the month from 7 to 8 p.m. Men Talk is for men only, ages 18 and up. Goal setting, Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. In goal setting, we come together to share long-term and short-term goals and receive encouragement and prayer to carry them out. Comforted is a support group for people who have lost a loved one. The loss can be recent or in the past. Comforted meets every other Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. Future meeting dates are, well, it says, well, the 7th and 21st are gone, so May 5th and May 19th. We invite you to visit our church website at lasfc.org, where all of this information, including phone numbers and access codes, are listed on the first page and under announcements. I love the visitors of this church. I'd like to know your name. Anna, Anna. Anne. Dana. 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 Oh, there is Dana. Isn't that fun? That's fun. I'm Pastor Johnson. I'm trying to get Lulu out of this pulpit. I think she's trying to sneak up. Uh, Zena, I have a word for you. Um, do you know the word coruscate? Do you know what coruscate is? If you had a telescope, but it wasn't just stationary, but it opened out in parts and they slid out and it could get longer and longer and longer so you could see further. That's a coruscating uh, pattern. I saw coruscation um, in a, um, a dimension of your life relative to productivity and, um, and then I saw it close like a collapsing, and there was a season of that, and then I saw it opening back up, but this time greater and magnified, and there's going to be something that you're gonna put your hand to, and it's going to be a greater increase than you can ever imagine as you obey the Lord. He says, when you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land, and that's what I saw, coruscating blessing. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Um, we had a, a loss, but heaven's gain in our congregation. Sister Pauline Foster beat us in to heaven. So she's there now, and I wanted to announce that. And it is my pleasure to announce her loyalty and commitment to the Lord. Amen. Amen. It, it just gives me such pleasure when I see obedience because white as it's kept, this is the appointment we must keep. Amen. And guess what? You're not going to be late for your appointment. Mm -hmm. As one time you won't be dragging in late. That's right. 
And we are doing everything to obey God so we won't be early either. Do you understand what I'm saying? We want him to call us, not the, the flesh, which brings us into premature death. Okay? So her service will be at Shabbat Foursquare Church on Saturday, May 14th at 12 noon. So we'll announce it again next week. But the family is in contact with our embrace committee. And so we're thankful for a family's wishes to uh, even include us. You know, sometimes if your family doesn't go to your home church, they may have other plans, you know, and that's their business. You know what I mean? We do what we can choose to do. But I'm so delighted that we'll be able to attend that service and, and see the family. Well, for, she's already been sent off. I tell you who's not gonna be here. Her, that's right. I heard some people at a funeral talking one day, did so-and-so come in yet? Did so-and-so? Afterwards, when they were leaving, I never did come, that's a dirty shame. Betty was in jail. That's a dirty shame, didn't come to so-and-so's funeral. So, I didn't do it, Pastor Johnson didn't do it. Lulu just hollered out. Well, she wasn't here either. <laughs> Amen. The deceased wasn't here either. You know, we just make a whole lot of huff and puff about nothing. Amen. Let your mind be bound to the mind of Christ. Amen. Praise God. We want to pray for uh, the people that are representing the Lord from Shabbat Foursquare Church. And they will go to a healing conference this week, uh, which starts this afternoon. Daryl Powell isn't here. I don't see him. He's going. And... Uh, Miss Lois and Miss Joyce are going. Is there anyone else here that's going? All right, let me just lay hands on you. Oh, Gwen McClendon isn't at church either. But those of you that are, let me lay hands on you or stretch my hand towards you or something. And you can represent God. Amen. We, we're just proud to send our people off because you know what mama used to say, don't get go out in the street and act a fool. <laughs> Didn't mama say that? Uh -huh. My mama used to say, because you're a Grady. But guess what? You're a God's kid. You're an ambassador. Represent him. Thank you. We're so glad for your commitment. We're so glad for your sacrifice to go. We're so glad for what you sacrifice and your labor in the church to see that healing is furthered in my midst, in Dr. Woods' midst. You all minister to us. We depend on iron sharpening iron, and we minister to you. It's not a one-way street. It's not. Praise God. Father, even as they go, I thank you that the word of God is in their mouths, and they shall add to the holy conference that they're going to for living waters, the dedication that they've shown Thus far, Lord God, I praise you for it. <laughs> Church is out, and they're still ministering, giving to people, putting their brokenness first to see that they be healed. And we just thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for the whole team that's going. There will be no incidents and no accidents in the name of Jesus. We speak that and decree that over your cars as well as your lives. There will be no contagious uh, outbreaks in that place in the name of Jesus. But the Holy Spirit will be contagious, and he will bring forth the victory, breaking and sh shattering strongholds in people's lives in Jesus' mighty name. Traveling and coming back home safe and sound. They'll be back Friday evening, is it? Yes, it is. Friday evening. And, and, and we just thank you. You know, you belong to the Lord, and you represent him well. I'm proud of you, proud of you. Godly proud. Amen. Um, it's time for the word. And, uh, brother. and I want to talk about the enemies of commitment. And would you... Um, 
Would you turn to uh, Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to uh, we're going to read from verses 25 to uh, 34. 25 to 34. Matthew chapter 6, 25 to um, 34. And you see that um, it starts out with therefore, and it's talking about worry. Yeah. And any time that you um, have a therefore, that means that there was something just before that. That's right. Okay, and so Jesus was talking about serving two masters. You can't serve God and you can't serve a mammon or riches or this world at the same time. And there's conflict even in that. It's like a woman or a man who have, has a, a mistress or a, a woman who has a lover. Um, you can't, you say, well, I love them both. No, you can't. <laughs> because it's a conflict of what? <laughs> of interest, All interest, right okay? So there's that worry right there. But the thing that will cause you to not be able to be committed or to be focused in the things of the Lord <clears throat> is trying to serve two people at the same time, God and whoever else that you have as God, Amen. and worry. Now, there's a difference between worry and concern. Mm -hmm. Concern is supposed to motivate you to action, but, but worry will paralyze you. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. He's not talking about concern. Concern motivates you to action, but worry will paralyze you. And that's what he's talking about here, the, par the paralyzing effect that um, it has on our, our human psyche. When you begin to worry, you get very peevish, you know, everything bothers you, you know, everything gets on your nerves, you know, because you're worried about it. Somebody's talking to you and, and you can't focus, you know, you begin to forget things, you know. And you begin to take on things that, when you start worrying about a lot of things that you shouldn't even be worrying about, that have no concern about you, doesn't affect you. So worry literally paralyzes you in serving and, and doing the things that God wants you to do. It will not only do that, but it has a dominoes effect. It has a dominoes effect on your family, it has a dominoes effect on your friends, and it has a dominoes effect on your friends and neighbors and the purpose that God has for you. And so Jesus begins to say, after he talks about trying to serve two masters, he said, you will love one. Uh, on verse on 24, he says, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot. You cannot serve both God and money. Then he goes on, he says, therefore, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. In this world that we live in today, there are a lot of things to worry about. Amen. I mean, you turn on the TV, and if you weren't worried about anything then, <laughs> two seconds after you listen to the TV, you, know, you have about 20 or 30 things to, th to think about. Not only are you worried about what's happening in the United States, but now you're worried about what's happening all over the globe, you know? And so, uh, just, there are just so many things that, that draw us, uh, detract us from what God wants us to do. And one of those things would be worry. And, he, and so Jesus says, the first thing he says is, do not worry about your life. Wow. That's what he said. He said, don't even worry about your life. Okay. Well, what could be any closer than your life? Nothing. See, he starts from the root of yourself. Come he said, don't even worry about your life. He says, what you should eat or drink or your body, what you should wear. Is it life more than food and the body more than clothes? So now he gets to the very, uh, what you call nitty gritty of, 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 of this whole thing about worry. He's saying to you right now, he said, don't even worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about your life. And don't worry about what you're going to eat. And don't worry about what you're going to put on. 
He said, because if you don't have life, you don't have to worry about eating. And if you don't have a body, well, you don't have to worry about your clothes or your shoes because there's nothing to put on it. All those things lose its value because there's nothing to utilize that. So he said, so now, the very essence of your life that brings all these things together, don't worry about it. And then he says, verse 25, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Mm -hmm. So now he's talking about the things that he has created, the things in nature, how he feeds them. Sometimes I look at the birds and, and I see them on the ground and they're eating something. I don't know That's what it right. is, they're eating something, little exactly. small birds. And I said, what in the world could they be eating? That, that grass looks dry, you know what I mean? But they seem to be happy, whatever they're eating, and they're fat, okay? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I've, never seen any, I've never seen any birds walking around and, and complain about, I wonder what they're gonna eat today, you know? I never see any birds ever, you know, and it's just, you know, kind of dragging their wings. No, every day I hear them when I wake up in the morning yes. and they're chirping and yes. they're talking, they're, they're vibrant. They don't seem to be worried about nothing. Amen. Well, why? It's because God is taking care of the birds outside. Amen. And he says this, are you not much more valuable than they are. Yes, you know, so often the reason why that we worry is because we don't know how valuable we are to God. In fact, we don't know how much, how valuable we are to ourselves. And God says, when you value something, what do you do when you value something? You take care of it. Yeah, you take care of it. You see guys shining up their cars, you know, you know, and uh, you, you see them polishing it, you know, you, it, it's clean every day. When you see a man who values his wife, he takes care of that wife, you know. You, she, he makes sure that, she, you know, she has enough to get her hair done and, 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 and that she's, you know, eating properly. And he's telling her, baby, I love you, you know. And, and he's, he's caressing her and he's loving her. He's loving on her. Why? Because he values her. Because if he doesn't value her, Come on. somebody will. Look out now. Okay? If he doesn't value her, you got to believe somebody else will. And so when you value something, you take care of it. He said, so God is saying, he's asking a rhetorical question. He said, are you not much more than they? It's like he's saying, don't you realize that you're more than the, the birds that I created? Don't you realize that you, you're more than the flowers that bloom in your garden? Don't you know that you're much more valuable, you know, than, than the birds that fly in the air? Don't you, don't you know that? Don't you, don't you know that? But a lot of us don't know that. And the reason why we don't know that is because we've taken our cues from other people. Maybe we had parents that didn't value us. Maybe we had husbands that didn't value us. Maybe we had children that didn't value us. Maybe we had bosses that didn't value us. Maybe we had strangers that didn't value us and took advantage of us. Maybe we are abused. And so, yes, no, you wouldn't know that you were valuable. But God is saying to you, at the root of your worry, he said, I value you. I value you. And then he goes on verse 22 and he says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And some translation says, can you add another foot to your life by worrying? He's showing how ridiculous it is to worry. But yet, we worry all the time. In fact, sometimes people use worry as a badge of honor. You know, it's something to be proud of. 
But it's not. It's a sin. It's a sin. That's, that's a you know worry is a sin? Because it means that you're, you're trusting everything else but God. Okay. And remember, worry will paralyze you. And if you've ever seen a person in a wheelchair, you see how restricted they are. Their life is restricted. And when you worry, your life will be restricted. When God says, I come to give you life and that what? More abundantly. More abundantly. The opposite of being restricted. The opposite of being restricted. So he's saying to you, if you worry, can you add a single hour to your life? Actually, if you start worrying, you'll probably start taking from your life. You'll That's probably right. live shorter life That's because right. of your worrying. Okay? And then he goes on to verse 28 and he says, And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Now, now this is something. You know, I've always wanted an Armani suit. I, I don't know. I just always, well, I said one day I'm going to have an Armani suit. But God said that that flower that he created is greater than that. Okay, it's more intricate. See, anything that God, anything that, I'm sorry. Anything that God creates, man tries to duplicate. Yeah. And that's all he can try to do. Yeah. But when God makes something, it's one of a kind. Yeah. That's who you are, you're one of a kind. Yeah. Uh, you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made, okay? God is saying to here, he's saying to here, he said, and Solomon, now you know Solomon was probably one of the richest men in the world. And you know he had the finest of clothes, okay? You know, he had, he had everything was gold and silver was like, you know, petty because he had so much of it. Everything was made of gold. He had the finest of fine, okay? He probably had a hundred something like Armani suits. But God is saying, you see this little flower over there? You might even call it a weed, but even weeds have flowers. He says, it's greater than value than what, what Solomon can put on it. It's greater than value. Why? Because God made it. And he's really talking about, so if that flower is greater than what Solomon or man can produce, then how valuable are you? How valuable are you? So he's saying here, so don't worry about your clothes. He's saying because I have made this flower so in such a, a wonderful way that if I can do that for a flower, how much more can I do that for you? If I can do that for a flower, how much more can I can do that for you? I can clothe you. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about what you're going to put on. And then he goes on, he continues to say, we're talking about the things that causes you to not be committed. And these are the things that will cause you to be distracted in the things that you want, to, that God wants you to do. Worry will cause you to move away from the call of God in your life. Worry will cause you to start out, you might start out well doing the things of God, but then things will come up in your life and you will begin to worry and you begin to step out of the spot that God has put you in. See, worry will, 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 will cause you to move out of the position that God had already placed you in. You have already been walking in it all along. But now all of a sudden, you start to walk out of that position. And anytime you start walking out of that position, there's a vacancy that's there. It's called giving the enemy place. Because once you step out, he steps in. 
I don't know, some of you yep. stepped out of some places. Uh oh, watch it now. Okay? That you yeah. never should have stepped out of. Look out, look out. And you're given what they call an excuse. Oh. Mm -hmm. But it's not an excuse. Oh. You, the worry caused you to move out. But God wants you to go back to where He put you. Okay, that's why you were, see, anytime you step out of the, un, an umbrella of Come God's on. protection, you're going to get wet. It's raining, cats and dogs. It's raining disease. It's raining all kinds of things that are happening. And as soon as you step out of that umbrella, you're going to get hit by it because you're not underneath the umbrella. And so then what happens is that your worry increases. The things that you worry about increases. And it has a domino effect. And not only does it have a domino effect, it, it, it's called collateral damage. Amen. There was a, a movie with, with Jamie Foxx and, who was his name, Jamie? Yeah, Tom Cruise. And Tom Cruise, thank you. Tom Cruise, okay? And Tom Cruise was an assassin. He got paid big time money. And, and Jamie Foxx was just a, 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 tax, a, a taxi driver. And so he got recruited uh, unwillingly to help Tom Cruise. Now what Tom Cruise would do is like if he was after you uh -huh. and you were on a plane, uh -huh. he blow up that whole plane. Oh. Okay, it's, it's called collateral. collateral damage. Okay, when you step out of your position where God has put you in, you're gonna suffer collateral damage. In what way? In your marriage? in your children, in the people that you were supposed to minister to, but because you were someplace else, they didn't get ministered to. And so when they didn't get ministered to, then what they were supposed to do that God had told you to tell them to do, they didn't do it. So then they don't, feel, they don't fulfill the things that God wanted them to do because you weren't in your place. And it caused them not to be in their place. It's called collateral damage. You can't afford to not to be where you're supposed to be. Come on now. That's beautiful. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Then he goes on and he says, um, in verse tw 29 again, and Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is, which is here today and, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, ye of little faith? See, what they used to do with those flowers, with, uh, those wildflowers, they would dry up and they would use it as firewood. Okay. Now remember now, those flowers were greater than... Um, what Solomon could wear. Yeah. Okay. So if you put a, 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 a value on those flowers, like you would put a value on an Armani suit, those Armani suits were $1,600, $2,000. Yeah. God said, yeah, that's nothing. You know, I put that in the fire. Yeah. Okay, I burned that up. And then God made hundreds and thousands of those flowers that looked better and made better and represented him better than the Zamani suits. Then he says, that's why it says, and today, they're here today and tomorrow they're thrown into the fire because they were used for cooking. Will he not much more clothe you, ye of little faith? So do not worry saying, uh, do not worry saying, what are we going to eat today? What are we going to drink today? What are we going to wear today? You know, you, you, you need food for your life. You need clothing to protect you. And you need drink to sustain your life because you need water. But God said the things that actually sustain your life, don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Then he says, for the pagans run after these things. Now he's saying who, who, these are the people who 
are worrying about all these things. They're, they're pagan. They're people who don't even know about God, who don't even trust God. You see right now uh, places where people, are, p people who are pagan, they begin to put value on things and they'll go hungry. In India, people are, are starving to death. And yet, they won't eat that cow. What do they do with that cow? They worship that cow. See, now, see, I couldn't be living in India. Because, see, at night, I've been doing some damage, you know. I, I probably, you know, crits and pits. I'll probably start me a crits and pits in India, a barbecue place, you know what I mean? I'd be in big trouble. Because, see, the thing that you worship is the thing that will, will starve you. The things that, will, that you worship are the very things that's going to starve you from the, from the benefits of what God has placed before you. Amen. Tell it, tell it. Okay? They, 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 worship, the, they worship monkeys and they, they worship all, all kinds of the things that God has created. And yet, they live in poverty. And that's what worship, worship the pagans, what they worship will cause you to live in poverty and not a life more abundantly. And so the Lord begins to tell us that the pagans, uh, these are the things that the pagans continually to ask. And then he says, uh, for the pagans run after these things. Okay, they, they run after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you have need them. God knows that you need food. He knows that you, you need clothing. He knows that you need to, to drink. But he said, but what about the economy? What about the economy? What, what were Russia's going to do? Uh, what, what, what about the banks? And you worry about all these things. See, what you got to realize is the, the economy and the banks are resources not sources. Did you get, let me say it again. The banks and your IRA and your um, 401 k are resources, not sources. The source is God. See, resources might close up, okay? But that doesn't affect what happens in heaven. Amen. That's why it says, make, put your treasure in heaven with moth and rust, and thieves cannot break in and steal. So where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. And see, what happens, that's when worry comes in. Because wherever your, your what is your treasure? Where is your treasure located? If it's in God, then you have peace. But if it's in anything else, you're going to worry. Okay? And it's going to cause you to stop, to not to focus on what God said. So God has, has an answer to this, all this worry stuff. And this is what he says. But seek First, his kingdom. And that's a choice that we all have to make. That's a choice. It says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. There, okay, so he's saying to you right now, he said, seek me first, and do it, and do it the way that I want you to do it. And stop leaning on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me. And I will direct your path. Amen. But when you don't do that, that's when worry comes in. Because, see, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, figure out your own problem. You, you're trying to be the alpha and omega of your own life. You're trying to be the beginning and the end. And you can't. That's only a spot for God. Stop doing that. And your worries will, will, will stop 
and you'll just be concerned. And you won't be paralyzed anymore. Paralyzed in your marriage, paralyzed in your job, paralyzed in love, paralyzed in your mind. Because that's where the battle is, is in your mind. So he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the kingdom of God is the will of God in action. He said, well, I don't know what God's will is. Oh, here it is. If you don't know what God's will is, it's right here. You don't have to go to the library. You know, you, you don't have to go around asking people, what, what, what's God's will? What's God's will? What's God's will? You don't have to search and search and search. It's right here in his book, God's will. Okay? In the Bible. So he says, so, there, so then he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these, and all these other things will be given to you as well. well. What are all these other things which you should put on? which you should eat, mm -hmm. and what you should drink. Amen. See, when you, when you put God first, he adds to your life, Amen. not take away. Amen. But when you worry, worry takes away from your life. Mm -hmm. Worry causes you not to be where you're supposed to be and receive what you were supposed to see. And then he says, and then in verse 34, he says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. How many people are worried about tomorrow? I remember one day, uh, and I'm, I'm going to end, I remember one day um, in the early part of my Christian life, I, w I was worried about retirement. And um, I didn't tell anybody. But, and I didn't say anything. I didn't confess it. But it was in my mind. I was worried about, gee, would I have enough money? you know, for my family. Well, I have enough money to retire. And at that time, I had about, what, 15 more years to work. Okay, so why would you work, you know, that far away? But it was in the back of my mind. It was gnawing in the back of my mind. So I remember one day I, was, I went home and I was, uh, I had laid down because I was tired. And God gave me a dream. And uh, in this dream, it seemed like I was, my eyes were awake. And it, I was in this cloud, and it was so very, very bright. And uh, it was so bright that I should have been squinching, but I wasn't. And I looked around, and it looked like smoke all around. I said, where in the world am I? And so I couldn't see my hand. I couldn't see my feet. I couldn't see anything, but it was just this cloud I was walking in. Then as I was walking forward, and the only reason why I knew I was walking forward is because the smoke was passing me up. So that's the reason why I knew I was walking forward, not because my feet were, were moving. I stepped out of the cloud. And after I stepped out of this cloud, I was in this place, and everything was in high, high definition. And the, the, the colors were beautiful. And I was on the earth. The only thing the earth had changed, because everything on the earth was made out of doubloons, gold doubloons, all over the place. The sea was made out of gold doubloons. And then I looked at the trees. And then the trees, they had the former trees, but on the leaves there were diamonds and rubies and every precious gift. And I said, wow. And then I could feel, I could sense that the ground was, uh, this, this uh, 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 golden blooms were miles and miles deep. It wasn't just on the surface. It was miles and miles deep. So, I mean, if you, if you spend a trillion dollars in, in, in a split second for a thousand million years, the, the surroundings wouldn't even change because it was so much of it, so much of it. And I said, wow, where am I? What? And I said, what is this place? And then I heard the Lord say that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, and then I woke up. He took care of tomorrow. And fast forward, when those 15 years passed and I was getting ready to retire, I was still kind of young to retire, and God had opened up another job for me, and I could work uh, for the LAUSD, and I worked another 13 and a half years for them. So I had two pensions. 
Okay. I had two pensions. Okay. So God will take care of your tomorrows as well as he takes care of your today. Amen. Now I want to, I want to talk about, this is the end of the sermon, but I want to talk about something now that you don't have to be worried about, and that's your salvation. Where will I go when I die? What, what, what will happen to me? But even more so, what will happen to me while I'm living? And God is taking care of both aspects of your life, after you die and while you're living. He's given his son Jesus to take care of all of that so you don't have to worry. That Jesus Christ sacrificed his life for your life so you wouldn't have to worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink and what you're going to put on and where you're going to live. Because he has, because of that sacrifice, God will redeem you by his blood and that you will become a part of his family in this kingdom, what they call the kingdom of God. And that's what he wants to do for you today. Jesus died for your sins. He's taking care of that. You don't have to worry about it anymore. That if you confess your sins, God said he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Everything that you've ever worried about, God is taking care of. Does it mean that you're not going to go through things? No, you're going to go through things. You're definitely going to go through things. But you're not going to go through it by yourself. He's, he's a good shepherd. He's promised to be with you. And everything that you face, I faced something I didn't think I was ever going to face, cancer. And I'm pretty sure some of you have gone through that. And the thing that kept me sane was, this, was uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, when God says, I have a plan for you, a plan for good and not for evil, the plan to give you a hope and a future. Hope dispels worry. If you die or you live, hope dispels worry. I had a cancer that was um, pancreatic cancer. And I, had, and I was at a hospital where there was only two doctors that actually performed this operation. And I, was, I had one, a Dr. Holt. And she performed that operation on me. I was in the hospital for for eight days. But that scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11, I have plans for you. I have plans for you. And I knew it wasn't time for me to die because God said he had plans for me. But even if I would have, I was still trusting in him. And you can trust him. Life or death, you can trust him with everything. While you're here, in the body, or out of the body, Amen. you can trust him because he's made provisions. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He's made provision for you and for me. You know, also God has given, provided us for a lot of things. He's provided us with a, a helper, a helper, a comforter, and that's the Holy Spirit. Some of you are saved but you need to be filled, or you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now he's the comforter, but he'll give you a language. Have you ever you know, prayed and um, you didn't have words to express what you wanted to pray? And so praying became frustrating. But when, you, when God gives you this language of the Holy Spirit, then it says that when you pray in the spirit, you're praying the perfect will of God. Now, you don't understand it. You don't understand this language, but God understands it. And it's not limited to what you know. It's not limited to your mental capacity. It's not even, it's not even uh, dependent on how you feel. But it's dependent on the language that God helps you speak that your spirit can speak to God, the perfect will of God. So if some of you would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, 
speaking in another tongue, that you'd like to ask Christ to come into your life to, to be your Lord and Savior. Pat Stansford is here you, to help you. You can come here and sit in the front desk, uh, front seat, and she'll take you uh, after the service, and she will minister you personally. You have um, asked Christ to come in your, not in your life, but you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus. So if you desire to be you know, baptized in water, we offer that to you. And uh, lastly, many of you have, uh, or maybe some of you don't have a, a church home, and you've been going from place to place. Well, you know, God has not left you homeless, okay? You're not a bum on the street. You, you're not homeless. You're not fatherless. And he has provided for you a home, a place where you can be nourished, a place that you can be loved, a place that you can grow in. And so if you need that place and God is speaking to you about joining us here at Shabbat, then, that's, then come up and, and sit in the front and Pat will minister to you about a church, about a church home. So that's what we offer here at Shabbat. Salvation, being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized, and having us as your brothers and sisters here, coming here and, and this being your home. So I'm offering you that now, giving you the time to think about it, but if you would like any of those offers, or all of them, would you please just come up and we'll give you time to, to come. Okay, thank you very much. Now I'd like to turn the service back over to Pastor Johnson.